Welcome to the Goldberg vs. Taker match. A match that generally made me want to cry. And that's not a good thing for a guy who has depression. Such a bad match. I mean, I've seen some of the highlights of Super Showdown when it came to Triple H vs. Randy Orton. It didn't look good. That didn't look good. It made me feel like this, this pay-per-view was going to be bad. I'm glad I didn't watch it. But when I did my Impact review, I did ask, did anybody want me to do a review at least one or two of the matches? And it was a subscriber named Matt. And I'm sorry, I can't remember the last name, dude. I'm sorry, I'm bad with names. But Matt said, why don't you do Taker versus Goldberg? Do that review. And here it is. Oh, man. This was bad. This. I. When I think of Undertaker and I think of Goldberg. I thought two good wrestlers who had characters that were larger than life that everyone loved. And then when I saw what happened on SmackDown Live, because I did watch it, and I saw Goldberg, I saw Taker. And Goldberg, when I saw Goldberg, who didn't even dye his beard, I knew then he didn't give a damn about what was going on as long as he got this. Because it didn't even feel like it was a lot. So going into this match, I wasn't sure how bad this was going to be. But I realized from the opening when these guys were coming down to the ring, this was going to be bad. Goldberg coming to the ring. He didn't give a damn. Because when he came out to his pyro, I don't know if the pyrotechnic um, technician pyrotechnician was even watching when Goldberg came out or was Goldberg able to get to the get to his spot in time because the sparkles that usually Goldberg would walk through he would breathe in some of the smoke and sparkles and breathe it out like a dragon he said to himself I want to make it feel like I'm a dragon and I breathe fire he didn't even come out in time to be there for the sparkles and then Instead of waiting for the rest of the pyrotechnics so he can at least do the kick with it. He did one kick and then started walking down the ramp. And then the pyrotechnic is going off after it. He didn't give a damn. He legitimately didn't even give a frack, frack. I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to curse here. He didn't give a damn. So Undertaker comes out and he's still professional. That's obvious of Undertaker. He cares about his craft enough that even if he can't go well in the ring... He tries to still do the mystique of it. So when you get to the ring for both these guys, and you look at Goldberg, who's in my face, the guy that Jimmy didn't give a damn. He didn't care. He didn't care. I don't know what happened in the back either. He didn't even want to be there. That this story just, just sucked. He didn't want to be in Jeddah because he knows Saudi Arabia is very biased, especially to women. And if anyone thinks Saudi Arabia isn't biased to women, it is. They're not changing. I don't care what anyone says that eventually Saudi Arabia will become like most of the modern world. You're still talking about a system that hasn't changed in over 5,000 years. They're not changing. To let women really feel like they're really like every other woman in the planet. Like the United States and Europe. Even Asian women got more rights than them. So I don't know if that what pissed them off or something happened in the back with Vince. But that look... Easily told me he didn't care. Then you got Undertaker, who was ready to go. He was pay he was basically ready. And once this match started, I knew it was going to be bad. You got two spears coming in the very beginning. You see them in my face. Taker sits up after that, which, that's Taker. He's going to do that. But this is less than a minute or within a minute of the match. And legitimately... Taker didn't look bad for the first minute, but as time went on with this match, particularly when Goldberg was thrown into the ring post and he popped his head open, he started bleeding. Now, mind you, I saw when Goldberg was coming to the ring and part of his head was already bloody, so he already probably hammered his head on something to make himself bleed. So going to the ring post, I don't think he expected to bleed that heavily, though. I think he expected to bleed. I think he popped his head because he would be ready to bleed anyway. Or he just does that to psych himself up. People do that. But when he hit that ring post, he started bleeding a lot. 
And once that happened, the match quality went from barely, this is the best. It was barely here. Then it went to here, and then it just dropped. That sucker dropped bad. It was bad. Once he got his head popped open and he started bleeding, it was just really bad. I, I don't even know. I don't even know how to relay how bad this match was. That once you saw Taker after maybe four minutes tanking, that he ran around the ring with at least a couple of runs, he was already beginning to get really tired. And then once Goldberg actually started a defense, once he started getting his butt kicked by Taker, it was ugly. At one point, once they both slammed into each other, and I don't think I got that shot, Taker was already tanked. By the time Goldberg did a third spear on him, he was already completely tanked. And by that time, Goldberg was already tanked to the point where Goldberg decided he wanted to do the Tombstone pile driver, And he tried to get him up to do it. And legitimately, Taker couldn't hold him. Now, mind you, Taker did do a Tombstone on Goldberg. He was able to kick out of it. I wasn't surprised. But when Goldberg tried to do it, he collapsed into the Undertaker's arms. It was so bad when it finally reached the end of that match. When Taker grabbed him to do a choke slam, Goldberg did not help him at all. And Taker had to do the rest of it and he could barely get him up. Not even past his chest here. Or maybe next to his neck. Maybe here. The highest he got is maybe to his neck. Normally, Taker would grab someone and get them up to his head. He couldn't even get him past his chest. Maybe here. And you see it in my face. Here it is in my face. Obviously, when this was over, done, Taker legitimately... I legitimately wanted to cry at this moment because it wasn't the fact the match was so bad. It's that Taker himself look really upset. Here it is in my face. When he crawled over to the ring ropes and the camera was in his face, he showed his frustration. He was upset. He legitimately was not happy with that match. Here's another shot. And he says, I think, shit. He was not happy with that match. It was that bad. When Taker shows his frustration and breaks Fabe Cabe, you know this was really bad. So how do I feel about this match? It broke my heart. It legitimately made me want to cry. The Undertaker was in a match that was so bad. Showing his weakness. When he's in a, in a match with a younger talent, that younger talent could do most of the heavy lifting for him. Now mind you, Taker's not in good shape. Not because he doesn't work out. He's 55 years old now. Or maybe 56. I don't even know how old he is. He's No, when is he? 54? 53, 54 years old? He can't go the way he does. He has to be able to have a pause. And with a younger talent, he could probably do that. They could pretty much hide it for him. But when he's up, and I've said this before with other wrestlers, like what happened weeks ago when it came to Tommy Dreamer and to Rob Van Dam. Rob Van Dam is in better shape than Tommy Dreamer. I love Tommy. I love RVD. They're both still great talents as long as they both work with younger talent that can hide their weaknesses. In this match, there was no way to hide the weaknesses. No way. It's bad enough that Taker's not in great shape, but at least he still periodically gets in the ring. Goldberg came back after a 12-year hiatus, did a couple of matches, went away for another 9 or 10 months, and came back probably not in 100% great shape. Sure, he probably exercised for it. Sure, he probably even went and practiced in the ring. But if you're not able to go in the ring for a long time, you're bad and rusty. He should at least had a month or two on the roster working with people to get in shape. Take her the same thing, even though I know they would look bad in the ring. But at least they would get back into the swing of things and figure out how they're going to be able to work a match where both of them get tanked easily and don't have the same strength they used to have. And this was terrible. 
Taker was so frustrated. Look at it again. This is a shot of him and Jimmy after the match was over. It was that bad. And the worst thing for me personally, I didn't want to see this match. I wanted to see Taker versus Sting. Yes, I know that probably would have been a similar outcome. But this would have made better sense than having Goldberg versus Taker. The most anticipated and wanted match of history. It's not Goldberg versus Taker. And yes, that is one of the wishes of a lot of people. It's Sting versus Taker. Sting versus freaking Taker. That is a stronger match. This is Goldberg versus Taker. I'm sorry. Yes, you would have a tank go tank taker versus an easier easily tanked Sting, but it's the match we wanted more than any other in history. And this is what we got. This, if you rate this one to ten, this was a two. I'm being honest. I don't hate Goldberg. I don't hate Taker. But if you're going to be honest, this was a 2 out of 10. But this is just my point of view. You guys tell me below. And I want to know, do you want me to do a reality of wrestling or major league wrestling? I'm thinking about doing it tomorrow. I don't think I'm going to do it tonight, but I am considering doing one of those tomorrow. So tell me if you want reality of wrestling or major league. Have a good day. Have a good night. Peace!